Hello everybody! It's time to play with a few different tools and techniques and lots of rubber stamps in our class. If you are new to me, my name is Joanne Rogers. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. So I always do ask you a question and the question is what is your favorite paper crafting technique? Not necessarily your favorite rubber stamping technique but your favorite paper crafting and I'd like you to try and count up the number of different techniques in the card that I'm making tonight and uh, we'll just see how close you are and we're going to get started so I've pulled out this as I started to say this one this one I've also pulled out these two little guys and mango so mango it is okay and we're going to be working with Sahara Sand. Now Sahara Sand is a color that you may not necessarily see very often, but I love it because it is just a very light tan creamish kind of color. I know that doesn't, <laughs> I'm not so sure that really captures it very, very well, but it's not nearly as brown as crumb cake and it's not nearly as light or um, crisp isn't really the right word, but it's much darker than very vanilla. One for the inside, which we'll stamp at the same time, and one for the outside. Okay, so I'm going to pull in just my little small stampin' grid, and I use this for stamping on. Now let me pull in our, worked really uh, the best on this size, which is a D size. We need some of the leaves here as well. And we need our little guys. So there's quite a few, and then we're going to need our words as well, but they'll come a little bit later. So the colors that I pulled out, I pulled out pale papaya. Then I have pumpkin pie. So I've got my oranges covered. I have Cajun craze. Now, you know what? I don't have Mango Melody anymore. I think I put it away. Let me grab it because we probably should have Mango Melody because that's the color of our paper. So let's do Mango Melody as well. Mango Melody and Cajun Craze and Shaded Spruce. We got lots of colors going on here uh, tonight, but we're gonna have a very colorful card and Blackberry Bliss. Okay, so we've got this here, which is going to be the main base of our card and we're going to stamp on that. So we're gonna start with our papaya and we're going to just stamp, and because the papaya is a light color, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, stamping off. So I'm just going to stamp the carrot. I'll stamp the papaya a couple times here. And I'm going to need to clean as I go tonight because I'm using the same stamp over and over again. So now we're going to go in with some Mango Melody. We're going to do one maybe Mango Melody guy here. And we're going to use our Mango Melody again in a minute. We are going to do one big purple guy and we're going to stick him up here. Black Ray Bliss. Okay, so that's what I started to talk about. These are sort of like our heirloom carrots. And maybe I'll do another, where's pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie over here. Okay, and we'll do a pumpkin pie guy right here. So we don't want our carrots to be just all in a row. We want some variety. We want some that are tall. We want some different colors. So I'm done with that guy. So now I'm going to come in. So these are actually the lines on the carrot. So I'm not going to go in with the same color. So I'm not going to use uh, pale papaya anymore, but I will use pumpkin pie. And I'm going to go in with the pumpkin pie on top of the mango. And pumpkin pie I'm going to stamp off and go into the pale papaya. So we just want just a little bit lighter look to it there. Go this way just a smidge and stamp off again. Now here and we're going to go with the Cajun craze. Now because I'm going from a lighter into a darker color I can just go ahead and go right into my Cajun craze. So we are two-step stamping and we are adding definition with darker color. So I am just going to add a little bit more Blackberry Bliss. Oh, and I went off the edge, but that's okay. No worries because we are going to hide some of that with what we do afterwards. So let's do some of the tops. So our tops are going to be in our shaded spruce. I'm gonna stamp off and I'm gonna stamp right off, right off the page on that one. Now I do find that some of these tops are a little bit too long. So something that I can do and I've already done it here. So I created a mask. 
So we have masking paper, and the mask that I created is uh, the whole carrot. So I'm going to put that carrot right on top of this guy here. Okay, so it's just a piece of paper that you're going to use over and over again. And I actually created two of them. Now I'm off the screen. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do it on this tall, this one here as well. Okay. So now what I can do is I can stamp further down the little leafy green part here. And when I take that off, you can see that there is no green coming into the carrot. So I'm going to do that as well with this guy right here. And we're going to give him just two. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put it on this one and bring that a little bit closer in as well. Okay, so that's how you can do that. Now, when you have a darker one like this, you don't have to worry too, too much because it is darker ink and it won't show as much. But just to be on the safe side, why don't we go ahead and we're going to do some same stuff here. We're going to give him some, I don't know, what do you call these things? So I'm going to stamp a few different times here because I want lots of nice foliage around there. Now I'm also going to take this uh, more flat leafed one. I'm also going to stamp off there and I'm going to do the same thing here. Stamp off a couple times and then I'm going to stamp a couple times more to give a whole bunch of life to that one carrot. Okay, so there's our carrot. We're gonna do two things. We're going to, first of all, I'm gonna close up some of these colors so I don't get my hands in them or don't get the card in them any longer. I'll leave these two out because one of the other things we're going to do is we're going to stamp some carrots just on the inside. So there's a little tiny carrot here and there's a little tiny leaf there. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so that's going to be the inside and we will put some words on there too. So now what we want to do is I'm going to pull in a blending brush and I'm going to pull in soft suede. So we want to give this a little bit of shading so that it doesn't look quite so stark. So to do that, we're going to uh, tap our blending brush right into our stamp pad and then we're going to tap it off and then we're just going to start from the outside and come into our card. And you don't want it to be too, too dark here. And I don't have to worry about doing too much at the bottom and you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm just getting a little bit of shading, a little bit of color, almost so it looks a little sepia, like you're looking sort of like an old photograph there. Okay, so it just gives it a little bit more life when we add some shadowing or shading to it. Okay, so now what I did is I took the stripes and splatters embossing folder because I really like this and you'll remember maybe that we used it a, oh, a few weeks ago now and uh, I did a piece of black and then I cut out that Scotty Dog punch with it. I just love the texture that you get with this one. It really is splatters. So that's what it looks like. And this is just a, a three by four piece of paper and this is four by five and a quarter. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tear. So when we tear, uh, you want to hold your paper in your uh, non-dominant hand and then you want to tear towards yourself with your dominant hand. It's easier that way, I find, but if, if you're ambidextrous, uh, you can do it the other way. So I'm going to hold it in my non-dominant hand and I'm going to tear it towards myself. And I'm going to start it just over here just by tearing it a tiny little bit to get it going. Hold it here and then tear it just with that hand holding this one fairly straight. And you don't want it to be even. You want to go up and down. You want to give it uh, some of this nice feathered edge. And you don't want it to be torn just all the same uh, height. Okay, so you get some of that undulating movement. And you get two sides, so don't throw out the other side. Get the other, that, that side as well. Okay, so everybody's counting out those, uh, the techniques so far, right? So I've done a few of them already.
Okay, so here we go. I'm going to add the same kind of shading to this to make it look a little bit more like dirt than uh, just like we did on here. Now this one where the embossing is is going to really pick up some of this color. And again, I'm not using a heavy hand here. I'm just using a light hand. And this piece of uh, paper is crumb cake. So it's a little bit different color than our Sahara sand. So it's really going to look more like dirt. And especially when you're going over top of that feather, you really get some darkness. Okay, so it's gonna look sort of like newly tilled kind of garden. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put this right over top. If I go the whole uh, top, we're gonna lose that carrot and this carrot, which we could, but I think it might be a little bit better if we pull it down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue that on and then I'll cut it off with my paper trimmer. And I'm going to put it on here, well, and I'm going to put it on here. And I'm going to put it on the top because I don't exactly know how far down that's going to go. But it's really not going to go that far. Let me just pull in my silicone craft sheet. And we're going to put this right on top, right about where the, where, so that we can see all of our carrots. So I don't even know how far that is from the bottom. Not too bad. Okay, so it's not even on there crooked, but hey, it doesn't matter. I could make it straight if I wanted. So I'm going to cut that with my paper trimmer. So I'm going to pull in my paper trimmer. And I'm going to line up this edge of the Sahara sand with the channel. And when I line that up on both sides, then I should be able to get a nice clean cut and cut off that edge. And I did. So one thing I might still need to do, looks not too bad, but I am just going to bring in a little bit, whoops, not with that underneath, because it won't, uh, it'll not dry on there. I'll just give a little bit more of the brown. Okay, so we've created our soil. We've created our garden of flowers. Now we need to do our words. So what I did is I cut out two of the sayings. Now let's see which one's going to fit. Maybe I'm not going to be able to give you. That one's just going to fit. So this one here is the, from the Warm Welcome. You could use the stitched rectangles for this. You could use the deckled rectangles for this as well. In this one here, it's a great size. I found that the stitched rectangles were too long and then one was too fat. So I just used that to cut out a piece. And this one comes from the Stylish Shapes. And it is this banner here. There are four banners in here. I really like this set. I think this is sort of a staple with, it's got circles, it's squares, and it's got the banners. I could use liquid glue. I'm going to use my stamp and seal. Just get that going. I do see that ink on my knuckle. I'm thinking I have to get that off of there. Okay, so this is going to go down here. One thing I forgot to do was use my bone folder just to crisp this up. So one of the great things about photopolymer stamps is you can see right through them. So I can see exactly where I'm gonna stamp. Oops, but I did something I shouldn't have. I wanna show you another technique. Hold on just a sec, I have to clean that off. Getting ahead of myself. So one thing that happens, I have not used that look at you, I don't think yet. And so it stains quite a bit. So I'm going to just make sure that that is dried off with a just a Kleenex. Okay, so we don't want to actually print or stamp the U, okay? We just want to say the look at. So I'm just taking a piece of tape and I'm going to put it right over top of the U. Now it's going to be hard to see, but I have to go right from there to there. And I'm going to do that just with my piece of tape. I'm going to make sure, and it's going to be hard for you to see, but I'm going to make sure that it's not anywhere except there. So I'm still going to be getting able to get the look at. I'm just going to pull in my Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to stamp the look at. And it looks like I've inked up the U, but I haven't. I've actually inked up the tape. So this is the really crucial part here. You will have to remove that tape. So don't let that stick around anywhere. Put it somewhere you're not going to look at it. And we're going to say look at, I'm going to try and get this straight without getting my head in the way. Look at, there we go. And we don't have any U. So that's how you can get a lot more life 
out of your stamps is you can um, even with images if it's easy to do with images you just omit some of it and that's one of the ways to do it and I like to do it here I can do it with my markers as well but this is still going to give me a more intense color so it, now it's going to say look at and we're going to do another thing we're going to take one of these colors oh I am dropping things everywhere so these are our colors and I'm going to take the U now this is the alphabet a la mode these are new dies in our spring mini and they are one and nine sixteenths high so they're not as tall as some of the other ones that we've had and I'm going to take the U and I'm going to cut it out and I'm also going to put it onto a foam adhesive sheet so that it is popped up a little bit okay so I've got one of these. These come in a pack of six and they last a long time. So what I'm going to do is I that was about this size. I'm going to cut myself a piece that I know is going to be big enough for the U. Put that off of there. So I'm going to take my mango. Now this is double sided. So both sides have a piece that you just pull back and then put it right onto your cardstock. This is going to go on top of it here and I'm going to pull in my uh, stamp and cut and emboss. So we're using the Boho uh, Blue Mini. This color is going to be an in color that comes with the next annual catalog. We're getting a sneak peek with our little mini here. This mini is free right now when you join Stampin' Up! at the level where you pay $175. So you get you pay $175, you get this free basically, which is worth $86, and then you pick $225 worth of items. And so it's a really great time to join Stampin' Up! because you get some freebies, but it's also just a great time to join a community of crafters, right? Just like we're all crafters here, that's what Stampin' Up! demos are. Just need to get some of my post-it tape. So this is post-it tape that I believe you can just get at Staples here in Canada. I actually got mine through um, Amazon. So we're just going to put the U right on top of where that foam is. It is going to go through our uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine, no problem. Ugh. You might have to use your super size strength. So. One of the things that I think of when I think of techniques is that they are a way to really just power up what we do. So we make cards, but when we add techniques, we just add so much more pizzazz to them than, uh, than we could. Like, sure, we could always just do, you know, a card like this, just with paper on it and a stamped image or two. But when we can add uh, things like, you know, shading, tearing, embossing, two-step stamping, uh, repeat stamping or generation stamping that's called. I'm giving you guys some hints here. Uh, then we have so much more fun stuff that we have happening. Okay so we are going to put this on and we're going to do the U something like that and so we can do it there or we can do on the other side. We don't have tons of things hanging off of our card so far. So we are going to go with the right, take our dimensionals off. Now one thing that I did find is that even with the dimensionals here and the dimensionals here, so we just need to take our paper off the back here and do that. It's really easy to get off. Now if this happens to lay out a little bit, don't, don't oh, just like that, don't worry about it too much because it will go back into shape or you can always wow it out if you wanted to. So we're going to say look at you and I'm just going to lay that second part onto the card itself. Okay no one quite like you. Pull that in. Let's put this one back. Put this one on. There's no one quite like you. Not too bad. So you have to look in a little bit, but that's what you want your people to do, right? You want your card recipient to look in and read it and it shows up a little bit better once it's on the inside of the card. So let's just put that one on with some um, 
Now, if you ever have that happen where your stamp and seal doesn't start, you can start it with your finger, but it helps if you use your uh, silicone craft sheet underneath. It really creates just enough of a cushion for it to roll really easily. Okay, so there's the inside, there's the outside. We have the dragonfly trinkets now. Are they too big? Let's just see. So here's a dragonfly trinket. Let's see, I don't know where we'd, we'd have to maybe put it there. We'll put it on with a glue dot. Now, because this is sort of small, I'm gonna take that glue dot, I'm gonna pull it off of there, and you may sometimes, uh, this gets referred to as a booger. So, and say it just like that, booger. And we're going to put it right onto our card, and then we're going to put our dragonfly on top of it. So I'm gonna put it onto my card and dragonfly right on top of it where we're not going to see it so there we go there is our card all kinds of different techniques on there and then i will show you some other samples made by my friend janine so mine is a little bit more in keeping just with green so and i also went to town a little bit too heavy i think on the uh nine okay on the um this guy here wow we did really well so you can see here look at the different how different this color looks here here i used early espresso here i use soft suede so you can totally change up the base just by changing the color and um you know i totally i tore this one different too so no two cards is going to look the same i did stamp the background here and i wasn't super happy with it that was this one right here and it's like yeah it's okay but it doesn't really i think add anything to the card and on the inside of this one, I just said love you. So this one could be a Valentine's card. So which one do you like better? Which one appeals to you more? The, the nice and bright with the mango or the one that's a little bit more toned down with the garden green? You can let me know. So then some of the other ones. So here's a thank you card that Janine made with her oval. So these are the stitched ovals. Uh, you may have these uh, dies in your stash from a while ago put that guy over here this one is super cute this one is a bunch of uh, carrots and uh, just a thanks again and she actually has um, it looks to me like it's either sponging or um, a blending brush rather or a sponging through a, um, a die to create the background Seeing that most are liking the mango one that we made tonight, that's great. This one is a belly band. So this is, there's another size carrot in there as well. So there's this little guy that we used of three. There's the big one and then there's a smaller one as well. So she used that to create a banner with. And then this guy right here where she cut them out, created a background again, and did some white embossing on the black. So all kinds of ways that you can use this set. Thanks a bunch. And, uh, and one other thing that I want to just show you, you know, I realize that this is uh, typed really small. But if you love techniques, I have classes. And my classes, there's uh, some that are on fun fold, some that are on different ways of doing things, which I'm calling techniques. So there's paper piecing on there. There's masking like we did here, but a little bit more, or like here, a little more involved masking. There's watercolor, how to create watercolor backgrounds. And I go in depth with techniques so that uh, you really go away having learned what that technique is and having made some beautiful cards too. So if you're interested at all, just go to this uh, URL. I hope that you picked up a technique maybe either that you haven't done in a while or maybe that you've never ever tried and it's something that you are going to use just to add some polish and maybe a little bit of a superpower to your card making.